Welcome back to the Dopest Show. You won't get sick. If I'm Spencer, this is Sasha. Spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the dumb stuff I need to get put in prison. I've also got quite a few stories about the wild stuff that actually happened when I was in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison. You want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So, I sparring the other day, and I, your mouthpiece starts to fall out. Like, once you get going so much, you're breathing hard. You know, and it, it'll start fight. You got to take your tongue and pop it back up. I got popped in my mouth when I was getting the mouthpiece back up with my tongue. And I bit my tongue. But it wasn't like between two sets of teeth. It was like between the mouthpiece and my bottom teeth. Oh, man. It's got my tongue swelled some kind of awful. So that's why I, I can hear myself talking differently because it's so swollen on this side. And I've tried to articulate words as best as I can so it wouldn't be noticeable done this over a number of times it ain't happening so that's, that's why i'm talking funny okay because right here it, it's <laughs> can't be helped but anyhow um yeah so petersburg was a weird weird place and what i'm going to tell you in this story it's not only wild about what happened but it's also about why prisons make people worse okay there are certain things that these predators do to, to see is this somebody I might be able to get by with something that I could intimidate or to, to get what they want? So when I first got to um, Petersburg, I self-surrendered to the low. Yeah, got sent to the medium for two years after I got in trouble. But starting at the low, there were some weird people. And I didn't know what type of prison it was. Now, in federal prison, there are high-profile people. Everybody from, you know, people that were uh i mean they'll bring people over that were kingpin you know uh, cartel in colombia they'll bring them up put them in a federal prison in the u.s they'll bring them over here that's what they do with sean uh pintard but they also do it with the chomos and there was one awful one like when you see stuff about them creating like these like uh super freak chomo boards where they all you know i guess you know have a good old chomo time and you know awfulness goes on there like, the, the people involved in that get sent to places uh, like Petersburg a lot of the time. Now, half of us local, half, well, 40% of them were Tromo. So, it's, it's a weird bunch that were there. And this one guy, Nowy, it's pronounced like Hanau or something. I can't say it. Now, he was, you know, he was white, but he looked like he might have been, you know, a little bit Middle Eastern. He spoke multiple languages fluently you'd see him talk with other people the muslims that uh you know like the muslims you know that were like brought over here to do time like you'd see him speaking to them they spoke perfectly fluent english now i saw him play tennis every day he played tennis with a few people that weren't tromos that was a weird dynamic okay one of the guys was like this young fella he i'd say he's probably about 26 to 28 and he played tennis with him every single day. His name was Benny. He's from Virginia, actually. Rob Banks. And um, it's funny because Benny said to a couple people something about him once uh, once they got out, you know, said something on social media. And he said something smart about, you know, them. And he's, and they're like, dude, you literally play chomo with, uh, tennis with a chomo every day. Every day. Now, it was Nowy, Benny, and this guy, Big Shoe. They called him Shoe. I figured because he got sent to the Shoe a bunch, you know, the hole. Um, nah, they called him, I guess, tennis shoes. So they called him Shoe. It made no sense. This dude looked like Terry Crews. Look, I'm, I swear, dude was built and looked like Terry Crews. I'm, I'm not even joking. Anybody in that building in Carolina Hall will tell you that. Pinto will tell you that. Pinto's the one got me telling this story now, too. Now, okay, I heard a thing or two. About now. Now, see, when you're waiting to go to eat, you crowd at the front of the building and you're released in what order your building placed in an inspection of cleanliness every two weeks. So you stand there waiting for about 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes, and people just sit there and talk to whoever's beside them. And, you know, he, he'd said something a couple times, just brief stuff, nothing, nothing bad or out of the way. But there was an incident later on. And this is the testing incident. This is the testing incident. And I look back and reflect on that. And I actually talked to Pinto about this. Um, 
it's it's pretty wild. So okay, you say something. I, I can't I'm trying, can't think of a specific example, but you say something, and that person, the predator, the booty warrior, whatever you want to call him, didn't hear none of them terms in there. That's all a YouTube thing. I, I didn't hear that till I got out, but it makes me laugh. Booty warrior, it's some funny sound and stuff to that. But anyway, um, now he said something to me like sarcastically, like talking down to me and putting me down. Like I like I might have said something that might have been a little obvious, and he was gonna make me feel like I was stupid for saying it. And I walked over to him and I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I said, I, "All that what you just did just now? No, no, no! Don't don't you ever do that again." And I said, and second off, for whatever I did to make you think that you know that was some type of acceptable behavior, I, I apologize because it's not. Don't you ever. Talk to me like that again. I'll smack the piss out of you in front of God and everybody. You can't allow stuff like that. And that's what prison makes people worse for. Like right now. I saw somebody was an idiot or something. And I took the high road. I just ignored him. You know, I just said something. Didn't mean nothing. I, I won't see him again probably. You know, it's a big world. Prison's a small... It's like a small little city. And, you know... The people in your building, I mean, that's like your neighbors, roommates, um, like your block pretty much. You can't allow that. You got to handle that right then, okay? And especially somebody like that talking to, you know what I mean? Mm -mm, open all kinds of bad doors. So I had to say something like that to him or else I'm going to get talked to like, like, like I'm some kind of, you know, punk or something like that. Mm-mm. Nah, it was early on. Too. I was not going to deal with that. Now, it was good that I handled it the way I did. Because if he'd done what he'd done a number of times to other people, oh, I, I would have broke him in half, stuffed him. Oh, man, it, it would it would have been bad. Okay. See, there's a private prison industry called Unicor. It's modern day slavery being honest with you there is a corporation that partners with the BOP and they split the profits now average pay in prison you know starting pay 10 15 cents and when you've worked your way up from grade 4 3 to all the way to grade 1 you can make uh, as much as 100 150 sometimes 200 a month and on holidays sometimes you get bonuses at Christmas they gave them bonuses you know the grade 1's grade 2's now Unicor Starting pay is one dollar an hour. That that takes years in every other job. So you're you're skipping the line to get good money. You're getting hundred sixty dollars a month starting pay. Okay. After you've worked there for two years, you get up to two dollars an hour. Two dollars an hour. That's three hundred twenty a month for a prison job. That's that's good money for prison. But they're making calendars, they're making a tremendous amount of profit. And they're making it because no one's going to complain because they're getting more money than they would otherwise. But I mean, look at it. Look at it for what it is. It's a corporation that's, you know, if you had an illegal immigrant working in a sweatshop over here, they pay them, they, they'd pay them more than $1 an hour. They're paying you less than what they'd pay in a sweatshop and they've legalized it. Anyhow, I go down the rabbit hole sometimes. If you're new here, that's going to happen. You know, I know people, a couple new people like... You know, stay on topic. That ain't gonna happen ever. Um, I got ADD, OCD, all kinds of other ABCs, a little bit autistic. So yeah, I do that. But anyhow, the low security didn't have any cameras anywhere on the compound except one at outdoor rec. Now, Unicor is a big building. It's a huge printing press, and uh, hundreds of people work there. Hundreds, literally hundreds. There are no cameras, there are different hallways, corridors, and everything else. And I had heard stories about now we haven't done something in the past. I'm like, man, he really do that? He didn't he doesn't seem like he'd do that. And now another dynamic of why he was accepted and why he was um hung out to a whole lot more people too was he was Muslim, okay? A lot of the middle-aged white men, you know, that are chomos, they they hide in the church, and you know. 
I, I I can't I couldn't you know I I can't I can't sit in a prayer circle led by a pedophile. I mean that's just something I ain't gonna do. So you know I, I pray myself in my room. I ain't, I'm not doing that. I'm not holding hands with a uh, with Chamo in, in a prayer circle. It, it ain't gonna happen. So I didn't go. But anyway, um, Christianity's one thing in prison. Islam's another thing. That's a gang. Yeah, you can say what you want. That's a dang gang. I know. I've I've seen them jump people. I've seen somebody jump on one of their Muslim brothers. Yeah, yeah, they get down. Now, I've seen a lot of serious people talking to him. See, a big thing with Islam is studying the Quran and everything else. You know, it's wild because Judaism, Christianity, and you know, Islam, Christians, Muslims, and Jews all pray to the same God that Abraham in the Old Testament prayed to. It's just what happened after Abraham that um, nobody will ever get along again about, which seems kind of silly to me. My mind works different, so, you know, thinking that all three argue about who's got it right, but everybody's praying to the same God that Abraham prayed to. But anyhow, studying is a huge part of it. He knew how to speak fluently, you know, um, and people come to him for that. And these are like serious people, serious, like actual for real gangsters coming to him for that. There were rumors about it. It wasn't until later on, you know, I'll get to that. I'll get to that later. But anyway, he could act normal. He'd seem, he'd be, you could have, if he showed up at your family's barbecue, you know, um, or something like that, he'd have a conversation with everybody else. Probably be pretty interesting because he's been all around the world. That's the type of person that's scary. Because you don't know they got these freak nasty tendencies going on in their sick head. Um, so what he would do to people, what he, he'd find, it was usually young people. Now, when I went into that prison, I was, you know, I think I was 22 or 23. I think it's 23 years old. Um, okay. When I went into that prison at 23 years old, you know, Kept clean shaved face, grew in all splotchy, and everybody kept saying, Salam alaikum. And I, I got more people trying to convert me to Islam, and you know, I do respect it. And I do, I, I ask plenty of questions, but um, I'm interested in knowing about, you know, each religion, but I'm a Christian. That's what it is. So, you know, I'd say, Salam alaikum. I'd be like, party on. Um, you know, sometimes people speak Spanish to me. I look like I'd be one of 10 different nationalities. Um, <laughs> None of which you could be certain about just from looking at me. We, we're not sure. Um, you know, we think it's German. There's only a handful of people with my last name in the country. Um, it could be, uh, you know, because it's hard to tell why. But anyway, don't know heritage fully on my dad's side. So, with that, with him, I saw him do that same thing he did to me with somebody else and it wasn't wasn't a week after he did that and this guy just sat there and he got all red faced and he didn't say nothing back he didn't say hey man come on with that don't talk to me like that that would have sufficed i went a little bit overboard when i first got there you know we didn't have prison youtube we had fleece johnson saying so gonna come get your butt you know and you know i did it's the start of a sentence the start of the sentence can determine how you're going to get treated the entirety of the sentence. Usually, once that gets set, it's it's what it is. Sometimes people come back from it, but it takes something pretty extreme. So, you know, I, I was a little bit aggressive. I, after, you know, I, I got my bearings, you know, people knew who I was and everything like that. You know, not like as some wrecking force or anything, you know. Knowing, you know, fight me, I'd fight back and that I knew a little bit about fighting. Um... But, you know, um, I wasn't going to take that. And don't talk to me that way. But I don't talk to people that way either. So I don't expect to be, you know, don't dish it out if you can't take it. Well, I can't take that. So I don't dish it out. And, you know, that's what it is. So this guy works at Unicor with him, young fella. And there's a whole big issue, whole big issue. And he now he ends up going to the shoe, to the hole. And so does the guy that was in, in the building that uh he'd made turn red face the other day. That uh that little fella told on him. He scared him. Now, 
you know, now he wasn't a, it wasn't a huge guy, you know, but this guy was substantially smaller than him, and he was really timid, and he seemed scared. That's not a good thing to have, you know. A lot of the times, the scared people think, oh, this is how prison works, and because they think this is how prison works, people like now we take advantage of that, okay? Um, I, I've seen people that are 130, 140 pounds stick up for themselves, fight and lose every one, and nobody messed with them because they're willing to stand up for themselves. I can't imagine taking a whooping with fists would be worse than taking a, a whooping with a meat shank. I mean, that sounds terrible. That ain't never going to happen uh, to me. You know, that, it's like one time when I was in jail, I told y'all that story. Before I, I, you know, put on a little bit of muscle and trained a little bit, David Hasselhoff looking like missing a front tooth. Big old mullet, like a redneck David Hasselhoff had me scared to death. Improvised, got chili powder and slammed it in his eyes, and I flailed at him. He was just joking; he wasn't trying to get my butt. But it did scare the piss out of me. And when I got back, whoever won the fight in the jail pod got to come back to the unit. He had to go somewhere else because technically I won. I mean, my punches and kicks wasn't hurting him. He was just screaming because the chili powders. The guards were falling over their own feet trying to come in because they knew he'd been messing with. Everybody knew it was a joke, but me. Anyhow, now he wasn't joking. Now we wait till he got in like one of these hallways or corridors, somewhere private where nobody else saw it. And that was the issue. That was the issue. If people don't talk, you know, say, yeah, I've seen that too. And you can't do that in prison. Okay. And little guy should have, should have picked something up and done something. Okay. Because he, he, he picked up something he had um, and he showed it to him. I said so, and the guy, guy, his, his his nuts dropped a little bit. He said he said a little something to him, and uh, said he said, "Man, I don't like that. Don't do that." And apparently now we just kept it out there and said, "Oh, you will like it." And I I heard this story. And I was like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they both stayed in the hole for thirty days. I don't think he got a charge. The other guy went to the hole too for telling on. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Lord have mercy. It's some messed up stuff. Um, and sure enough, that same dude I told you about, if, if Benny dude, back out there playing tennis with him. These same people. Some people had no more when it came to stuff like that. But anyhow, yeah, um, a number of stories with this dude. But basically, somebody had got the papers, like the whole story of what he did. And they printed it out and they passed it out. So you had to read, uh, like, it did. sometimes they do this with people. Like, if you lie about who you are, especially at Petersburg. Petersburg, you are going to accidentally be friends with the Chomo if you are a local. See, I'm from Roanoke, Virginia. Most of the Roanoke people go to Gilmer, West Virginia. Or Morgantown Camp. That's where the judge sentenced me to, was Morgantown Camp. But judge sentencing me don't mean nothing. The BOP does what they want. So with camp points, I started at Petersburg Low. A low was higher than a camp. Camps don't have fences. Guys are meeting, you know, street walkers out in the woods. Well, I guess you call them woodwalkers in. Oh, that's kind of funny, isn't it, woodwalkers? But anyway, um, yeah, they're, they're cooking lobster in the microwave, getting caught doing that. And they're not getting caught with tomato wine. They're getting caught with actual glass balls of Ciroc. I mean, and Patron, stuff like that. There aren't even, there aren't even walls. But anyway, I got to this freak show place, Petersburg, from Virginia. Okay, D.C., Maryland, also, a whole lot of guys. North Carolina had a whole lot of people got sent there. Good man from South Carolina, Tennessee, too. All those people were local, so they got sent there. But then the other people, they had that trauma program, the SALT program, sex offender management program, that they would do. And, you know, a lot of times, they'd start other prisons, California, Texas. Even one dude from Alaska, and when they get beat up, shanked, whatever, and they're like, well, they got to do that program here. They say, I'm at Petersburg. and let you know an orientation. You better not mess with them. You'll get five years if you do. As something, I, I never saw that happen, but it's, it's backwards. The way they treat normal criminals terribly and chomos, you know, like they're first-class citizens. Staff become friends with them. It's the most obscene, absurd place ever. But anyway... You'll accidentally make friends with these people because certain people know how to blend in better. Muslims know how to blend in better. 
Okay, he could have just pretended he was going on a, you know, uh, you know, any of y'all watch Team America, the South Park thing? You know, uh, he he went, it, it just made me think of that for some reason. But anyway, he, he went on a jihad or something, and, you know, he told people that. But they put these papers out, and he was a part of apparently some big trafficking thing. He had some money. He was doing some very unspeakable stuff that I can't say on here. Terrible. Terrible. As bad as you can get. No excuse for it. And he got put out there for that. But I mean, everybody kind of knew that already. There are some people get put out and you're like, what? But him is like, man, come on. He'd been pulling out on people for a minute. He'd been grabbing a hold of people, pulling around a corner if this mall them enough. He thinks he can get by with it, too. There are a couple stories of that. Odd dynamic that happened in Petersburg. Because, you know, Chomo's, you think Chomo, you think scum and this, and that's right. A lot of them are a little weak, weird looking. Some of them are big, strong dudes. You wouldn't guess. Just, okay, they're big old strong dudes that can fight that are Chomo's too. You know, they got something special for them. They'll put, they, they yeah. Um, but anyway, think about that. You know, you get a big old strong Chomo. You, that's not what you think about typically. But when you got so many of them there, think about their tendencies, what they did outside. If they get a chance to do victimize somebody in there, pull them around the court and do something, they're going to do it. They did do it. And also, what was really weird was like people that weren't chomos victimizing people the same way chomos would do. Um, but that ain't, that ain't looked at as like bad or evil or whatever. It's like it's backwards. It makes no sense whatsoever. Like that's acceptable. The victims actually looked at as the one who um, gets looked down upon. Because you shouldn't have let that happen to you. I mean, think about how messed up that was. Or that is. Well, you know what I mean? It is. It's going on now. You know, that's why I trained karate four hours a day, six days a week for two years when I was on bond. I'm going to let Fleece Johnson get my butt. I'm going to have that happen to me. Couldn't go down like that. So, you know. And, you know, that's why I train now, too. Um... I don't like bullies. I don't like people when they, you know, try to tell me what, you know, do whatever you want to do. Just don't tell me what to do. And, you know, it's, I don't have to keep my mouth shut because I'm worried about somebody. But I, I don't go around bullying or anything like that either. It's, that's not me. That's, that's not my personality. Um, it's weird thinking about these concepts, you know, just how prison works, the whole little infrastructure of everything. But anyhow, if you like the video, press the like button. I'll tell more. Stories on Nowy later, but if not, I've wasted, uh, let's see, 22 minutes and 57 seconds of your life in which you'll never, ever get back. Oh, man, I guarantee you I'm going to rest tonight. Whew, Rick, Vegas prison stories, and doing time with Big Weavy. He's going to change his channel's name to Weavy's World. Uh, two people have become my best friends. I spent five years with eight contacts in my phone. Three of them, my jiu-jitsu, my judo, and my boxing coaches. That's for family. I didn't use Facebook, don't go out, restaurant, train, come home, study. Train at the house. I got a whole gym here. Um, and then, you know, the stuff that I do to help addicts. But that's something I keep private. That's, that's not something I talk about because it's nobody's business. And part of what makes what I do work is anonymity. Um, yeah, I'm just going to shut up on that part, but yeah, um, the individual work with them and, you know, um, just, yeah, been so detached, but went on a live just to support them. I heard Rick from Las Vegas talk about Weedy. He's from Beckley, West Virginia. My family comes from close to there, Southwest corner of Virginia, a place called Garden Creek near Grundy. Only thing you'll know Grundy for is rest, wrestling, not wrestling. They, they, they're country, so they say they don't say wrestling. They say wrestling. Oh, you're talking about wrestling. They won't call it wrestling. They call it wrestling. You know, I wish to God I had because it would make me so much better if I'd done that all growing up. But I couldn't get down with the spandex. Couldn't get down with it. You know, you see the outline of your dong and stuff and your family's in the bleachers watching you? Couldn't do it. I regret not wrestling, but I wish they had like an outfit like jujitsu. It's just like shorts without pockets and, you know, like a board shirt, like something you wear on a surfboard is what you wear in jujitsu. But that spandex singlet, 
couldn't do it couldn't get down with it um i'm very tired we were up literally till 5 a.m on that freaking live um that song uh by nirvana penny royalty i'm so tired i can't sleep <laughs> yeah oh man and couldn't sleep and i should have just laid there until i went back to bed but then i was like i'm just laying here nothing not ever go to sleep so i hopped back on the live after laying there for about 30 <sighs> tired tired i'm tired anyway that's it have a good one